Greetings to one and all. It's estimated that about 8 million species, both animal and plant uh, species, exist in this world. And from an eagle to an earthworm, each one of them have a purpose. Most of these species are unconscious of their purpose or their purpose is programmed into their life cycle. The human being is the most evolved uh, pers uh, species in all of these uh, 8 million species. So we have to have a a better purpose, a larger purpose, so that can, we can leave this ecosystem better than what we inherited. I'm sure all of you recognize this butterfly, a beautiful monarch butterfly. It lives for about two to three weeks, but its life cycle is about uh, three to four weeks. Its life cycle is longer than the entire lifespan of the butterfly. So it goes through a stage from an egg to a caterpillar to pupa. I'm sure all of you are very familiar with the life cycle. And the purpose is to lift pollen grain from one flower and pollinate in another flower. And that's how the life cycle continues, the larger world's life cycle, but that's how the purpose for a butterfly gets unfolded. What are the stages in our lives as human beings? How do we navigate our life? How do we get to our purpose and how do we contribute to this world meaningfully is the crux of my talk. The challenge is how do you discover? You know, discovering your purpose is a very big challenge. If you know where you are going, a lot of things become easier. But if you don't know where you're going, every bit of the journey is going to be very difficult. Let me try to share with you uh, certain uh, steps that may help you to uh, churn, journey, plan your journey and make it uh, worthwhile. I'll, I'll quote some examples, some of the people who are visible, who have made changes at a significant level. And people have, in different walks of life have contributed to the evolution of the world, from Stone Age to where we are in cyber age, the contributions have been immense over the generations. I'm sure you recognize all these three uh, distinguished leaders and all of them have contributed immensely and are contributing as we speak today. I'm sure countless people have contributed. And these people have come, come through a formal education, they have proved themselves and then they have contributed. And there are a set of people, you know, only recently formal education is coming into sports music. Earlier it never had uh, formal education. It was always somebody is passionate, somebody is learning, learning from a guru. It was not organized, but the world is changing fast. But these are uh, leaders like Virat Kohli or Neeraj Chopra, Sanya Mirza, Shah Rukh Khan. They identified their purpose. They are the outliers. They are not the mainstream players. Mainstream people go through formal education. These are outliers who kind of shy away from that and then they, uh, take a, a lonely path and uh, establish themselves in the decades. And these are phenomenal leaders, you know, these are people who change the course of history. These are rare individuals whose life experience builds them. And it's a very interesting uh, proposition for all these individuals. They just evolve in that society where they belong. And then they transform that society in their own lifetime. But that's not all. The world is not run by all these uh, big giant people. It is run by everyday people, everyday heroes who contribute. The person who drives the bus, the person who delivers the milk, the agriculture who, uh, agriculturist who puts uh, food on the table, the, the bus driver, the teachers, the doctors, the nurses. Entire ecosystem is filled with people. Each one is fulfilling a purpose. And most of the time, people are not conscious that they are fulfilling a purpose. But when they get conscious, then you can see them doing a tango in the world. They are the people who are getting recognized. They are the people who are uh, the, the torchbearers uh, for the upcoming society. So these are the six phases to the discovery. I'm sure I'll go into each one as I speak about it. The first one, which is very critical, is identify your life task. How does one identify your life task? You know, if you look at a person like Elon Musk, I'm, I'm just wondering whether he played with cars all his life. You know, these young kids, young boys who clutch onto small cars, and then they behave as if they, they arrange all their cars in front of them. They show it to their guests. They take pride. They spend hours looking and playing with these cars. And they grow out of it so at some point of time. But people like Elon Musk did not grow. Henry Ford did not grow out of it. These are people who had a passion. And they pursued the passion. And it's not about the big guys uh, like Elon Musk or Ford. It's, it's many people. People who wanted to say, who thought, I'll, I would like to be 
uh, a writer, somebody read a, a, uh, an Enid Blight and said, oh, this is what I want to do. This is what I would like to become. I would like to become a writer and, and contribute to the society. Somebody decides to become a musician. So unfortunately, the formal education kills this uh, interest. The formal education takes you through a certain process. So the formal education is very important because not everybody understands at a very young age, I want to be a policeman, I want to be a doctor, I want to be somebody. But many of the people try to have inclinations towards some fields and they try to figure out what it is. It is it's invariably when you go through the formal education, I'm sure a person like Shah Rukh Khan or Virat Kohli went into a formal education and then they decided this is not what I want to do. This is not what I want to do with my life. I want to do something else. They are an outlier and they are, they are one in a million success. Not everybody becomes as successful as uh, they are. But that's how you identify your life task. You have to be very, very careful. If it's your children, you have to allow them to express themselves. And that is where magic starts happening if they start expressing. They may not be phenomenally successful as all the people that you saw, but they have a chance to be a much better, happier, fulfilled individual. The next point, you know, a lot of times we feel all that we learn happens within the first 25, 26 years during the formal education space. Formal education teaches us how to learn. Formal education prepares us with a professional degree or a qualification, but only does that much because the science is evolving so much. If you become an engineer 10 years ago and what you're doing today is very different. If you became a doctor or a lawyer or somebody, the whole technology revolution is changing every field uh, that we get exposed to. So it's important for us to realize that it is practical education comes after formal education. It takes a good 10 to 15, 20 years. That's why you see a lot of the speakers here, my fellow speakers who have ma mastered their field, they all spend that 15, 20 years quietly without nobody recognizing them under the carpet as they say. That's when the seed is forming. That's when they are trying to grow. You know, as they say, the large banyan tree once was a small uh, seed uh, under the ground. You know, that 20 years, 15 years when you're getting formed is a very important period and trust the process. It is very important to trust the process uh, for all the younger people, have patience, and it eventually all your results show up over a period of time. This is stage two. Stage three, it's important to find a mentor. You know, you, you, you can't look for a mentor. mentor. Mentorship happens when you're ready, as they say, the guru shows up, or when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. So it is very important for you to be aware. Look around your own uh, lifespan, where you're working. It's not monetary assistance you're looking for. It is not who pays the most. It's where you learn the most. That is very important in apprenticeship, and that's true with the mentor. If you're able to work with the mentor, they can take you 10, 20 years, 30 years ahead of your learning curve, ahead in your learning curve in a couple of years. So that is the power of a mentor. And who are the mentors? You know, you look at people like uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi had Leo Tolstoy as a mentor. Virendra Shevag had Sachin Tendulkar as a mentor. And uh, Ivan Lendl, the greatest, uh, one of the greatest tennis players, was, the, was is a mentor to Andy Murray, who won a Wimbledon English player. So all these mentors are very, very important. Again, apprenticeship is important. You may be wondering, where did Gandhi spend 15, 20 years? He was in South Africa under the radar. Nobody knew the Gandhi. When he landed in India, that's when we started recognizing the Gandhi. But he became a Gandhi during that mentorship years and also the uh, apprenticeship years. Social intelligence is very important. Sometimes we all think it is possible to be successful if you know how to play the game. If you know, if you have the skills to play the game. It's not your skills that matter. It's understanding what the society needs. It's a societal intelligence. How people react. How do you handle people, egos of other people? How do you handle your own greed? How do you handle your own uh, uh, problems that comes with anger, comes with envy? And how do you read, uh, deal with other people who come? So being socially cognizant, socially adept, observing other people, it's very important, right? You are not playing a singles game in life. You are playing a large uh, team game in life. So it's very important to be socially uh, relevant, socially conscious. And that is true when we run organizations. I'm sure you're wondering, many, of, uh, many people who run organizations are very socially intelligent, highly evolved socially. They know how to connect people, they know what ticks the people rightly, and they keep doing it again and again and again. 
and a stage in your life comes you've kind of mastered those three or four steps uh, before you you got a good apprenticeship you got a good mentor and a stage comes when you unlock yourself look at virendra shevag virendra shevag's mentor was sachin tendulkar who played the game to the perfect grammar of cricket that is the perfect shot that sachin tendulkar would play virendra shevag does not even know what shot he is going to play he is absolutely creative there is no rules of the cricket game that will fit into virendra shevag's life and creativity comes in multiple ways you know take uh, steve jobs steve jobs life if you look at it first phase of his life was apple macintosh all that the second phase of his life was toy story the pixar and the third phase of his life you know the whole life prepared him it's a combination of those two and that is when this whole mobile revolution came up until apple came in it was blackberry nokia's of the world apple reimagined the world when i say apple reimagined steve jobs in his head reimagined the world because he had the life experiences to do it he had built over a decade of life experience which came together and unleashed this revolution which all of us are uh, a part of uh, witnessing and in a matter of 15 20 years we have all transformed right there is a generation they say before electricity after electricity before internet after internet today it's before mobile and after mobile our entire lives are, are run with mobiles you know with this flood most people were worried they did not have the internet connection not about the power connection you know it's a very interesting transformation right there was a time when we would have cribbed a lot about power so it's a very lonely journey when you are going through this unleashing creativity but that's a very important step because this is when those connections in your brain fall into place and it's very unique for each individual you don't know when people can come in uh, I, some of the individuals like mahatma gandhi when he came to india he, he, india he was about 50 already but that was the stage he was right for this country and its uh, independence struggle if he had even come 2 years earlier he wouldn't have been ready the country was not ready so you show up at the right time but you have to go through the process mastery is the final step you know i'm sure some of the speakers who spoke before me they are masters they are masters of their art liver transplant it can't be done a police of that caliber the art uh, that madam spoke all of them have mastered their art they have come to a level of sophistication in their approach in their brain and they did it because they followed their gut it is not a it's not like you get into ukg and then you get out at 12th standard that is not how they led their life they followed their passion they followed their vision and then one step at a time they played to their strength they had the courage to go beyond boundaries you know our own independence struggle mahatma gandhi said i'm going to fast with before internet before uh, all communication the whole country fasted with him today let let me fast here nobody would even bother about it so he had that innate power that is the power of mastery nelson mandela nelson mandela came to power and they said 40 million people who were oppressed due to apartheid they said this is the time there are 5 million white people we are 40 million let's make this a black country and here comes a man after 22 years of imprisonment he comes out and he talks a very different language he talks what he describes as a rainbow nation let us live together anger will hurt him and hurt us so i think these are people who change evolve and they are superhuman beings uh, that when they reach that kind of uh, stage of life i would like to uh, thank uh, uh, author robert green uh, in the book mastery i would recommend for uh, each one of you give it to your children this is a great book uh, which which kind of whatever the process i had shared uh, came from his uh, thinking and i would strongly recommend it finally you know a man who gave vision to millions of ple- people dr venkataswamy now i would like to uh, quote uh, him intelligence and capabilities are not enough there must be a joy of doing something beautiful you know this world we have inherited from somebody we have to give it to somebody and our great 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 grandchildren whom we don't even know whom we don't even see they don't even have to be our grandchildren we have to do something beautiful today so that they have a life that they can look forward to thank you